Hello guys, welcome to the Studentship YouTube channel. I am Stanley. In today's episode of our biology series, we're discussing about the human cell. While you are here, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and also share to your friends. The cell is the basic functional and structural unit of life. It is the unit of life because without the cell, there will be no living existence. The cell forms the structural unit of the compartment of the living organism. For example, if you come to the liver, you have what we call the hepatocyte. If you come to the muscle, you have what we call the myocytes. These cells forms the structure of this organism. This cell forms the basic function of this organism. So what I mean in essence is that without the cell, there will be no life. Living things, as we know, is divided into two. You have the prokaryote and you have the eukaryote. Basically, you also have two basic types of cell. You have the prokaryotic cell and you have the eukaryotic cell. The prokaryotic cell is, is a cell that don't have organelle. It's, not, it's an atypical type of cell. And you find this type of cell in a typical organism called the bacterium. The prokaryotic cell does not have organelle, like I said. So it has... So this is the atypical cell that you can get in prokaryotic cell, for example, the bacterium. The bacterium. So aside the bacterium that forms the major example of the prokaryotic cell, all other eukaryotic cell have what you call the plant, can either belong to the plant cell or the animal cell. This is the prokaryotic cell, a typical example of the prokaryotic cell. So aside the prokaryotic cell, every other cell that you can get in a living organism belongs to two major class. You have the plant cell and you have the animal cell. If I go for that, there's a word we call the cytology. Cytology means the study of cells. So some cytologists or some biologists in time of initio, okay, uh, made the research about the cells. These scientists, they gave us what they call the cell theory. The cell theory postulates that every living organism must have a cell. This is one of the postulations of the cell theory. Then secondly, you say that cells come from pre-existing cells. What, what do I mean here? I mean that cells give birth to cells. That's reproduction, cell division. That cells come, that cells come from pre-existing cells. Then lastly, cells have organelles. Okay, these organelles perform some specific functions in this cell. This, so these scientists that made this postulation about the cell theory, they, they were the first people to study the cell and give us the, the function of the cell. One of them is Robert Hooke, the British botanist in 1665. He was the first to do an experiment on a cell uh, when he examined the cork cells, the cork cells from a, from a tree called the cork tree, that's oak tree, he examined them and, and found out that these cells has a honeycomb compartment, which he called a cell. Other, other scientists that also made great contribution and experiments in this cytology include, you have Robert Hooke, like, like I've said, you have Dujardin. Dujardin also made a great impact in cytology because when he analyzed the cell, he said, he said that the content of a cell is called a saccode. He called the content of the cell a saccode. That's Dujardin. Sapokin later called the protoplasm. So Dujardin, in his experiments and cytological studies, called the content of the cell a saccode. While later, later on, Sapokin now called the content of this cell the protoplasm. Also, we have Sa Schwann. We also have Sa Skeledin. Okay, so these, these scientists, they made a great impact in the study of cell, which I call cytology. So like I said earlier, we have talked about the prokaryotic cell. So talking about the eukaryotic cell, I told you that this cell can belong to two major class. That is the animal cell and the plant cell. So this two different part, part of the cell has different organelles in them, which have different functions that they, that they exist. So I will be drawing a, a, typic, a typical animal cell with the organelle and also the function of this animal cell. Okay, so this is a rough sketch of the animal cell, a typical animal cell. 
um, the diagram may not be a fine one, but I'll, I'll just use it to illustrate the organelles and their functions. So this is the typical animal cell. So an animal cell is bounded by a thin layer of membrane called the cell membrane. The cell membrane, okay? So other organelles that you can find here is the nucleus, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, ER stands for endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, you have the ribosomes on them, you have the mitochondria, you have the Golgi body, you have the centrioles, you have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, you have the lysosomes. You sort of know that aside the nucleus, if you sideline the nucleus from the cell, the whole semi-liquid area of the cell is called the cytoplasm, aside from the nucleus. Okay, but if you now add the nucleus back, the whole cell is now called a protoplasm. So we're talking about the various function of this organelle. So first of all, this is the cell membrane. Okay, this is like the covering of the cell. An adjacent cell membrane ought to be here. That will form, that will form another cell, like up here. Another one may be here. This cell membrane demarcates itself from each other. Is the line is the boundary of the animal cell, and this creates a junction here called the gap junction, in which two cells tend to communicate together. The gap junction, in which enable the two cells for signal transduction. So that's what the cell membrane does. The lining of the whole cell. You have the nucleus. The nucleus is the organelle of the cell that carries the genetic matter, the genetic code of the particular cell. It has chromatin and also have the, uh, the nucleosomes inside. This organelle carries the genetic material that has to tra transfer the genetic material from the parent cell to the daughter cell. This organelle called the nucleus carries the genetic material and it helps to transfer this genetic material from the mother cell to the daughter cells. Okay, you also have the, root, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. If you come to the animal cell, you have two types of ER. You have the rough ER and you have the smooth ER. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, it is rough because there is a presence of ribosomes on the lining of the, of the endoplasmic reticulum, as you can see here. So, this one is smoother than this one. On the body of the rough ER, you have attachment of the ribosome. So, what is the function of the, this rough, rough ER? The rough ER helps to synthesize enzymes in the cell. Also, they help in protein transportation inside the cell. The ribosomes is a part of the organelle that helps in protein synthesis. So, these ribosomes, they, they form this protein and attach them on the rough ER. So, the rough ER helps to translocate these proteins inside this particular cell. The next organelle we have here is the mitochondria. The mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell because this is the organelle of the cell where for circulation occurs. This organelle, ADP is changed to ATP. ADP stands for adenosine diphosphate and is changed to ATP which is called adenosine triphosphate and this ATP is the energy currency of the cell. So mitochondria is called the powerhouse of the cell because it helps to generate energy in which the cell used to do, to do its functions. We also have the Golgi body. The Golgi body that is down here it was named after the person that founded it which is um, Camillus Gorgai. So the Golgi body is helped to us in transportation inside the cell. We also have the cytoplasm like I said before is a semi is a semi fluid area of the cell. Centros. The centrioles is the part of the organelle that helps in cell division. It helps in the mitosis, of course, in the, in the cell. We also have the, sm the smooth ER. The smooth ER is the organelle that helps to make lipids. It helps in fatty acid synthesis. Okay. So we also have the lysosome. Lysosome is what's coming from the word lysis, which means breakdown. So lysosome is the organelle of the cell that helps in breakdown of the course in the cell. So these are the important organelles that you can get from the animal cell. So I'm going to draw a typical plant cell so that we can compare the two cells to know the similarities and the difference that both of them possess. So, this is a picture of a typical plant cell. Like the animal cell, it has the cell membrane, it has the nucleus, it has the ribosome, it has the rough ER, it has the Golgi body, it has the mitochondria, it has lysosome, it has smooth ER. In addition, it has a vacuum. It has a vacuum, it has chloroplast, it has cell wall. So, like I, I told you earlier, in the, function of the, in the function of the organelle of the animal cell, the cell membrane forms the lining of the cytoplasm, the nucleus carries the genetic material of the cell, the ribosome synthesize proteins, the rough ER the synthesize enzymes and also help in protein um, transportation. We have the Golgi body here that also helps in transportation, transportation inside the cell. We also have the chloroplast here. This chloroplast, they, they are one of the plastids of the plant cell. The, the plant cell has three major plastids. You have the chloroplast, you have the chromoplast and you have the leucoplast. The chloroplast forms the green pigment of the plant cell 
which helps in photosynthesis. The leucoplast, they helps in storage. They have to store starch in the plant cell. Then you have the chromoplast. The chromoplast, they are a distinctive feature of colors in the petals of flower in the plant. Then also you have the mitochondria. As an animal cell, they are the powerhouse of the cell. They help to generate the ATP in which the plant used to carry out the feed function. They have the lysosome that also helps to digest. They have a digestive function inside the cell. They also have the smooth ER, which helps to form fatty acid. Then lastly, you have the cell wall. The cell wall is rich in cellulose and they help to form the rigidity of this of the of the plant cell, giving it its rigid shape and an ultra structure. So these are the organelles of the plant cell. So I will be talking about the similarities and the differences between the plant and the animal cell. So if you have not been following up, just follow me up now because in every exam question, you tend to, you tend to see this subtopic in the, in the in your, in your exam sheets. So we will start with the differences between the plant and animal cell. So the first and major difference between the plant and the animal cell is the cell wall. The plant cell has a cell wall while the animal cell do not have a cell wall. This is the number one striking difference between the plant and the animal cell. The second difference is the, is the centrioles. The animal cells have centrioles while the plant cells do not have centrioles. Then thirdly, we have storage of food. The plant cell stores food as starch. As starch. starch is the middle of, is the middle form in which the plant cell stores their food. While in the animal cell, they store their food in form of glycogen. The fourth difference is the chloroplast. The chloroplast forms the green pigment in the plant cell. This green pigment helps the cell to carry out photosynthesis. So the chloroplast is present in the plant cell, but it is absent in the animal cell. Okay, the last difference is what I call the cell sap slash the vacuole. The vacuole. Okay, this this cell sap, this vacuole is the major is the major form in which the plant cell stores nutrients and some enzymes in their in the cell. So the cell sap or the vacuole, which is lined by the tonoplast, is being found in the plant cell. But in the animal cell, it is usually absent. Even if it's present, it is so small. So in the plant cell, you have a large cell sap or a large cell vacuole. But in the animal cell, we have you have a small cell vacuole, if it, even if it's even if it's present. So these are the difference between the plant and the animal cell. We have the cell wall, which is absent in the animal cell. We have the centrioles, which is found in the animal cell, but is absent in the plant cell. We have the storage of food in the plants. Plants store food in form of what? Starch. While in the animal cell, they store food in form of what? In form of glycogen. We have the chloroplast, which is found in the plant cell but is absent in the animal cell. Then lastly, you have the cell sap or the vacuole, which in the plant cell, you have a large cell sap or a large cell vacuole, or in the animal cell, even if it's present, it's so small and tiny. So we'll talk about the similarities between, between the two cells. Okay. The similarities between these two cells, they are too numerous, so I'll be listing them. So the two cells have a cell membrane, the two cells have lysosomes. The two cells have Golgi body. The two cells have a cytoplasm. The two cells have mitochondria. The two cells have ribosomes. And the two cells also have endoplasmic reticulum. So these are the, the similarities between the plant and the animal cell. Okay, so our cell has various forms in which they exist. What do I mean here? I mean that for a cell to exist, they have different ways of existence. So we have four major ways in which our cell exists. You have a cell that can exist as a single unit. You have a cell that, that can exist as a colony. You have a cell that can exist as a filament. And you have a cell that can exist as part of a multicellular organism. So these are the various forms in which the cell exists. So first of all, we have the single cells, cells that exist singly. Example is the amoeba and the euglena. They are made up of a single cell and they carry out the various features of a living organism, which are the nutrition, the uh, excretion, the respiration and the rest of that. So these cells have ability of to live on their own as a single cell. So examples are the euglena, uh, like I mentioned, and the amoeba. So also some cells can come together to form colony, form, to exist as colony. They can't exist as as unicellular so they form colonies so an example of this colony is the volvox here example here is the amoeba and euglena as single cells so as colony example we have is the volvox this this these cells form colonies and they live together so also some cells can come together to form to form up to 10 to 12 
cylindrical cells that we call filaments. These filaments, they are, they are independent of each other. So an example of cell that exists as filaments is what I call the spirogyra. So spirogyra are filamental cells. Okay, so lastly, we have cells that, that exist as part of multicellular cellular organism. So what do I mean here? I mean here that this, this cell, they come together to form, they form tissues. They aggregate to form a part of a multicellular organism. For example, the cells that you see in, in humans. So these cells, they come together to form tissues and they form a part of a bigger organism. So this will now lead us to, to our last part of the tutorial, which, which I call cellular organization. We have from cell to tissues, from tissues to organs, from organs to systems. Okay, so this is the cellular organization of life. So every multicellular organism that have cells have this arrangement, have this organization in their, in their, in their system. So we have from cell to tissues, from tissues to organs, from organs to systems. So this cell that we've talked about now, some cells that have specific function, they aggregate together and they form tissues. Like tissues are made up of likely cells that have the same function. So tissues of the same function also come together to form organs. And then organs of the same function now come together to form a particular whole system. So this is the cellular organization of life. From cell to tissues, from tissues to organs. Cells that have similar function, they come together to form tissues. Then tissues that also have the same function now come together to form a bigger level called the organs. Then organs now are also formed together to now form the bigger level called the systems. Okay, so that's it, guys. So we're solving some life past question now to test what we really did um, in this tutorial. This question is coming from Jam Past Question in 2009. It says, in a cell, the genes are carried by A, the nuclear membrane, B, the lysosome, C, the chromatin thread, and D, the mitochondria. So the answer is the chromatin thread because the chromatin trend is being found in the nucleus. And like I told you, the nucleus carries the genetic material of a cell. So another question says like this, the membrane surrounding the vacuole in a plant cell is called dash. A, plasma lemma, B, tonoplast, C, nuclear membrane, D, endoplasmic reticulum. So the answer is tonoplast. Like I told you before, the tonoplast lines the cell vacuole in the plant cell. This is a super question jam. The structures found only in the plant cell are A, cell membrane and cytoplasm, chromatin and nucleus, cell wall and chloroplast, cell membrane and lysosome. So what's the answer? The answer is C, cell wall and chloroplast because the plant cell only have cell wall and chloroplast, unlike the animal cell. A jam question in 1985 says, a group of similar cell Performing the same function is called dash. A, you have an organ. B, you have a tissue. C, you have a system. D, you have an organelle. And E, you have an enzyme. The answer is a tissue. Because a group of a group of cell, similar cell, performing the same function is called a tissue. So that's a wrap up, guys. Um, I believe by the end of this story, you have known what a cell is, the different organelles of a cell, and also the similarities and also the difference between a plant cell and, a, and an animal cell. So if you have any form of question, do let us know in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and also share it to your friends. For now, bye-bye.